Hello. It's wonderful to be here. Hi, my name is Frank, and I collect secrets. In five years, over a half million people from around the world have written down their deepest confessions on postcards and mailed them to me. And tonight, I'd like to share with you some of the silly and shocking secrets, the stories behind them, and maybe a few surprises, too. I asked earlier that people be supplied with a postcard at their seats, a red postcard with a white back. If you got one of those, can you hold it up? Can I make sure everybody got one? Oh, terrific. Excellent. Thank you. Well, as we're talking about secrets tonight, and maybe looking at a few secrets, I'd like to invite each of you to imagine what secret from your own life you could put on that postcard. And if you did, maybe an embarrassing story or a, a humiliating childhood experience. And if you did, what would you do with it? Would you hand it to the person sitting next to you right now? Or would you mail it to a stranger? In November of 2004, I had a crazy idea. I printed up 3,000 postcards, just like this. They were blank on one side, and on the other side, I had some simple instructions. You're invited to anonymously contribute a secret to a group art project. Your secret can be a regret, fear, betrayal, desire, confession, or childhood humiliation. Reveal anything, as long as it's true, and you've never shared it with anyone else before. And after work, I would drive to downtown Washington, D.C., and on those dark streets, walk the sidewalks, approaching strangers, soliciting their secrets. Yeah, it felt as weird as it sounds. The most common reaction I was getting from people was probably, I don't have any secrets. But I always made sure they took a card, because they've got the best ones. I didn't talk about what I was doing with my friends or family members because it was kind of this, this weird idea. Well, my friends or neighbors. I did mention it to my wife. I explained it to her, and she really didn't understand it, but she supported me. My parents had been divorced for many years, but I called my dad and explained my project to him, and, and he listened for a bit and then called it voyeuristic. I think there's a little bit of truth there. I called up my mom and described Poe's secret to her, and she responded by saying it sounded diabolical. And I was on the phone and when I was Googling, talking to her, and I Googled diabolical. I didn't know exactly what it meant, and it, it means of Satan, del diablo. <laughs> that might be a little bit strong. But it didn't take me too long before I realized maybe it wasn't such a crazy idea, because secrets and postcards began to find their way to my mailbox. It was just a slow trickle at first, then dozens, then hundreds, then tens of thousands, then hundreds of thousands. Today, I get about 100 to 200 postcards every day. Each one of those stacks is about 200 postcards. That pile contains about a quarter of a million. I have twice that many. And when they started coming, I realized I had accidentally tapped into something full of mystery and wonder that I still don't fully understand to this day. I don't think I could turn it off, even if I wanted to. And I know my wife was kind of upset early on because she said, gee, thanks, Frank, now we can never move from our house. And that's when I had an epiphany. And I had the epiphany when I got this postcard. The holes are from when my mom tried knocking down my door so she could continue beating me. This was a secret that was written down and mailed to me on a photograph of a young man's bedroom door. And I posted it on the website, but I wasn't ready for what happened next. Almost immediately, I started getting emails from other young people around the world telling me their stories sending me pictures of their bedroom doors, one after another after another. And as they came in, I would post them on the web. It formed this long column of images of broken doors. And the emails I was getting were just as compelling as the images. I remember a message from a young girl. And she wrote, seeing all those broken bedroom doors didn't depress me, because all this time I thought I was the only one. And knowing other people share my secret, it doesn't make my secret go away. 
But knowing my burden is shared allows it to feel a little bit lighter. And that's when I received a postcard of a broken door that reminded me that when I was young, I had one of these doors too. And for the first time, I understood that there are two kinds of secrets. There are the secrets that we hide from other people and the secrets that we keep from ourselves. And now, thinking back on the beginning of the project and why I really started it, I, I think in some ways, even though I didn't know it at the time, it was because I was struggling with secrets that I was keeping from myself. And only through the courage strangers were showing me by revealing their secrets to me was I able to, to find the strength to face that part of my own life that had been haunting me. Thanks for listening to one of my secrets. None of this would have been possible without the power of the web, without Blogger, Facebook, Twitter, these new tools of social communication that allow all of us, entrepreneurs, artists, students, all of us to have new kinds of conversations, conversations that have never been possible before. And these conversations, they, they, can, they can snap, they can become dynamic, they can make that jump into the real world, becoming communities, bringing people together face to face, building relationships, changing the world in real ways, just like all of us here today. That's why I'm so optimistic about the future of the web, because the same tools that I used for free are available for all of us, and they're easy to use. They reach millions of people without costing a penny. Post Secret was, was a very simple idea. It wasn't genius, it was just mail me your secrets. Anybody could have done it. Any of you could have done it. But I know there are a thousand or ten thousand other ideas out there right now, as good as Post Secret or better, just waiting for that one person to believe in it and make it happen and start that conversation. What kinds of ideas, you might be asking? Well, has anybody here heard of a website called I Found Your Camera? A few people. Well, if you haven't, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. His name's Maddie. Maddie lives up in Canada, and he was inspired by a post secret postcard to start a website where he invites people who have found a lost digital camera, a memory stick with orphan photos on it. He asks them to mail it to him, and he takes the images off these cameras and posts them up on his website. And every week, thousands of people from around the world visit his website to try and spot photos of friends, family members, so they can be returned. This one's my favorite. <laughs> it might sound like a simple idea, and it is, but it leverages the kindness of strangers in a very powerful way. Every one of these photos, and thousands of others, have found their way back to the owner, sometimes crossing oceans, sometimes through language barriers. And Maddie showed me an email he had received from somebody once that read, Dear Maddie, thank you, thank you, thank you. The first three years of my daughter's life was on that camera. So what's your crazy, what's your diabolical idea? Well, this is fun. Now I get a chance to talk about the actual postcards that I've received. And sometimes they're not just postcards. The artwork is the postcard itself. All the artwork you're going to see here tonight came from the sender, but sometimes the postcards... Well, let me just tell you, I've received secrets mailed to me on naked Polaroid pictures, seashells, funeral announcements, sonograms, a potato. I didn't know you could mail an Idaho potato, but you can. One of my favorites arrived on a Starbucks cup. Somebody put my home address and their secret on a Starbucks cup, and they mailed it to me. The secret says, I give decaf to customers who are rude to me. <laughs> Here's another one I like a lot. When I was in third grade, I found my mother's diaphragm. I put it on my head and looked in the mirror, and wondered why she'd never told us that she was Jewish. <laughs> it wasn't until years later that I found out that she was really only a Catholic using birth control. I've never told this to anyone. 
This is one of my favorites, and I like it so much because I feel as though it's universal. I think everybody here right now, if you honestly looked back at your childhood, you could identify an instance or a time where you, you misinterpreted the adult world in a humorous or a funny way. And I think when you have one of those endearing stories, if you can share it with someone you trust, it allows you to deepen that channel of intimacy that you share with that person. And it allows that other person to feel comfortable telling you one of their deepest secrets. But I also like it because of the last line the person wrote. They wrote, I've never discussed this with anyone. This postcard could be the only time in their life they ever let that secret go. And, and I think that's tragic. A friend of mine told me recently that in Hebrew, the word secret means come closer. And so now, every time I see this postcard, it reminds me that, that maybe I'm keeping secrets in my own life too, for the wrong reasons, when instead I should be using those secrets to come closer to the people I care most about. I wish all secrets could be fun secrets. Ha ha, he he. <laughs> I always wonder who mailed this one in, sandals or socks? We'll never know. <laughs> I will never in my life be as good at anything else as I am at killing people. I've received hundreds of postcards from soldiers and soldiers' families, veterans, in fact, if you go to the Post Secret website this week, there's a video that just has soldiers and soldiers' family secrets. Fifteen years ago, I gave up a baby boy for adoption. One year ago, I found his address in the next town. Four months ago, I drove past his house. Last night, I took my two young children trick-or-treating to his house, and he opened the door. I almost cried, but walked away instead. This secret has always had a strong connection to me, but even more so not too long ago, when, when after an event like this, I shared this postcard, came back home, and received this email. Dear Frank, last week you were speaking in Portland, Oregon. I walked in a little late to a very crowded room, you said a few words, a few more, and then suddenly I recognized my words. Fifteen years ago, adoption, one year ago, trick-or-treating, tears sprang to my eyes. You were reading my secret, and I heard it. Everyone heard it. My heart was thumping so hard in my chest, I was certain everyone could hear it too. I wanted to yell out, that's my secret. I went home later after buying a few books and told my husband that you read my secret to hundreds of people. He smiled and hugged me. I asked him if he wanted to know what it was. He said, no, a whole room full of strangers knows, and that's enough. What you did to me when I was 16 was wrong. I never felt so alone in my life. I never felt so much pain. Today I'm strong because of you. Thank you. I was speaking in Vancouver not too long ago, and when I got to the border, the, the customs agent there asked me, he said, what do you do? What's your occupation? And I made the mistake of saying, I collect secrets. I barely made my flight after that. But one of the questions he asked not long after was, was why? Why do people mail you their secrets? What's the reason? And I think the motives are just as varied as the secrets themselves. I think some people just want to get something off their chest. Like the postcard I got not too long ago, it had a, a photograph of a high school on it, and the secret read, to the class of 1977, I still hate you all. <laughs> but other times I get postcards with artwork that's been so painstakingly created or secrets written with words so carefully chosen and selected that it reads like a poem. And for those people, I think there's a deeper reason. I think some people share a secret in order to search for grace, 
or, or better understanding of themselves or acceptance. Maybe to offer forgiveness to a friend who's no longer in their life as a way to find resolution or maybe a first step in a much longer journey to where that person needs to be. But I think that very act of sharing a secret, whether, whether you whisper it in your best friend's ear or put it on a postcard and let it go, I think that very act can be transformative. It can change who you are. And my hope is that this person, when they were finally able to find the words to take ownership of that secret and then let it go, I hope they were also able to leave behind that part of their past where they felt victimized. And I get a chill down my back every time I share the story because my hope also is that in recounting the stranger's story, it inspires all of us to do the same thing. I have lived in San Francisco since I was young. I'm illegal. I'm not wanted here. I don't belong anywhere. This summer, I plan on jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. This postcard was on the website three and a half months ago. In one week, over 60,000 people who had read this postcard joined a Facebook group called Please Don't Jump, offering support, encouragement, resources to this person. And because of that website, the mayor of San Francisco declared September 22nd, Please Don't Jump Day. They had an event on the bridge, a band was there, there were speakers, there was a crowd, they want to do it every year. Because of that Facebook page, over $100,000 was raised for 1-800-SUICIDE, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline in the States. And I believe some of the people who virtually made that possible and changed the world in a real way are here with us this evening. So please help me express my appreciation to you. Thank you. Well, well. When we decided to keep you, your life wasn't the only one saved. This one arrived on a deflated helium balloon in my mailbox. Oh, this is good. That Saturday when you wondered where I was, well, I was getting your ring. It's in my pocket right now. This postcard was up on the website just this past Valentine's Day. It was the very bottom, the very last postcard I shared. And it wasn't up for more than a couple hours before I got this ecstatic email from the guy who mailed it to me. He said, Frank, I've got to tell you this story that just played out in my life. He said, for two years, my girlfriend and I, every Sunday, we make it this ritual to go to your website, we read through the secrets, we share our own secrets. It's really brought us closer together. So when I saw that you had posted my surprise proposal to my girlfriend at the bottom of the website, the very last secret, I was thrilled. I tried to act calm. I went, I got my girlfriend. We came back to the computer. Just like every Sunday, we started at the top. We were reading the secrets. He said, but this time it seemed like it was taking her forever to get through each one. He said, we finally got to my secret and my stomach was doing flip-flops. He said, she read it once, she read it again, and then she turned to him and the first thing she said was, is that our cat? And he was down on one knee, he had the ring out, he popped the question. She said, yes, you're all invited, we'll meet there. And so I emailed him back and I said, listen, you've got to give me something to share back with the community to let everyone know how your, your romantic story ended. And he sent me this picture. Yeah. So the Post Secret website has been growing after five years. There are five Post Secret books. There's the blog, there are, are videos, there are Post Secret exhibits that tour the country. But more and more, I'm having these Post Secret events at universities, performing arts centers, where we're not just talking about secrets and showing secrets, but giving audience members a chance to get up and share their own secrets. Silly secrets, soulful secrets, shocking secrets. And it's really been this incredible way of, of concretely showing how all of us, strangers, family members, students, are connected in ways we can't see in our everyday lives. 
Not too long ago, the, the first young woman who came to the microphone at one of these events, I could tell she was shy and nervous. She came up and she said, whenever I'm walking across campus and I see somebody coming towards me who I don't want to talk to, I pull out my cell phone and pretend I'm having a conversation with someone. And then she kind of slinked back to her seat all embarrassed. And I said, no, 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 you might have felt like you were alone at the microphone just now sharing that secret, but I guarantee you there's a whole network of people that are connected to you through that, just like every secret. And I asked the audience, I said, who here has, I'll ask you guys, who here has ever done that with a cell phone to get out of a conversation? Anybody? Let me see arms. Yeah, exactly. And that's tr so true with so many of our secrets. And for me, that's what this project has done more than anything else, is remind us in a concrete way of how we're so connected by sharing untold stories and giving voice to those who are unheard. Free your secrets and become who you are. Thank you. Bravo! Thank you so much. Thank you all.